Hey guys, so today we're testing out the Jellison TT1 mountain bike. Now they label this thing as a mountain bike, but really is it? Well, we're gonna put it through some tests today. One thing I do wanna mention is they did send this to me for testing, but we are gonna put it through the test, see how the throttle works on this bike, how the PAS levels work on this bike, what kind of power it has going up hills, and some of the other cool features that this bike has. And in the end, I'll give you guys my honest opinion whether or not this bike is worth it or not. So this is a 350 watt motor on this bike. It's 36 volt and has a 10 amp hour battery built into the frame on this bike. The first thing I wanna mention is the battery is not easily swappable. However, it is removable by taking out a few bolts and the plate off the bottom you are able to easily switch out the battery if you were to have to buy a new one but like i said on a ride it's not going to be easily swappable if you're interested in picking one of these up i will leave an affiliate link on amazon to this bike currently as of me filming it the bike is about 630 dollars for this color i think they have a coupon to get the green one for 600 dollars, and then you have to pay like 40 dollars for shipping so around 600 and 40 to 670 dollars currently as of me filming this bike all right guys so right now i'm in pedal assist zero pedaling this like a regular bike what's nice is the throttle does work in pedal assist zero but the only thing that is not nice is that it does not work throughout the pas level so the only way you're going to be able to use your throttle is pas zeros this is normal on a lot of bikes sometimes they set it up to work in zero sometimes they set it up to work from one through five some bikes let you have throttle in zero and one through five it just depends on how they configure the bike so let's go ahead and do a throttle only test here and see how fast we can do with just throttle this bike is rated to go 20 miles per hour, so we'll see if we can hit that speed. 17, 18 on the display, and I'm 160 to 165 pounds. 19 and a half on the display, 18 on the, th on the uh, GPS. So I would say easily 17 to 18 miles per hour on level ground look like looks like more like 17 so 17 miles per hour max speed with throttle let's try out the pas levels here and see what they can do so let's start from the stop here to see how this picks up so like i said the throttle will not work when you're in the pas levels let's start pedaling really nice and gradual pickup here let's go ahead and shift up a few gears and it looks like pedal assist one is going to be around nine miles per hour let's go up into pedal assist two pedal assist two looks like it's going to be about 11 miles per hour pedal assist three looks like it's going to be 13 miles per hour pedal assist four Fifteen miles per hour and pedal assist five. This is going to be the max speed with pedal assist. Eighteen. So it looks like about eighteen miles per hour for the max speed with pedal assist. And that's without me barely putting any effort into the pedals, guys. That's just basically me spinning the cranks. So one pretty nice feature about this bike for it being such a cheap bike is that the display is pretty decent on here. The numbers are very big. It's pretty bright at night. And also it has USB charging, which is crazy at this price point. You could plug a charge cable into the bottom of the display underneath and you could charge your cell phones up while you're riding. That's a really nice feature, especially for such a reasonably priced bike. So now there are a few settings in here that look like are adjustable. I don't know if it makes a difference if you do adjust them, but we're gonna go ahead in and find out. So if you hold the positive and negative uh, button down here on your control, it takes you into the P settings. This is kind of like the electric bike, how it has adjustable settings. Like I said, I don't know, P01 is for your display brightness. P03 is the voltage, 36, don't wanna change that. There's a few different ones in here but p08 if it's the same as electric should be the speed 32 is what it's set on but we're going to crank that up to 45 
and that should be around four, uh, 28 miles per hour. So we'll see if that makes any difference at all. And sometimes when you change these settings in these bikes, guys, it doesn't really change anything sometimes. Let's back out of here. All right, so we're gonna see if the speed's any faster now. Let's turn the bike off and back on just to make sure some bikes you have to turn on and off. So let's try out the speed now and see if it made any difference. Let's try throttle only. So it does not look like it made any difference with the throttle. Still about 17 miles per hour. Let's go up into five and start pedaling and see if it made any difference with that. And it looks like it's gonna be about the same, 17 to 18 miles per hour. So changing those speed settings does not look, look like it makes any difference. So I'm gonna go ahead in and set that back to where it was from the factory. Another nice feature I like about this bike, guys, is that the handlebars are actually the thicker handlebars where they mount a 31.8, and they're actually pretty wide. So you get a nice, good, wide grip on these handlebars. It's very easy to control the bike. They don't feel like they're too skinny and too hard to control, so that's a nice feature there. But let's go ahead over onto a hill and see what kind of power this bike has. A little bit of throttle only here up this small here hill first and the motor's pretty quiet on this it's actually uh one of my more quiet ones you could you, if you guys seen my other jellison or gleason i still don't know how you say that guys but if you've seen my four inch fat tire review of that bike there was a few issues in the beginning overall i think after the ride the bike wasn't too bad of a bike overall if they could get past some of the quality control issues but it was one of my most quiet bikes to date that i own the motor and this thing's pretty quiet too once you get going um little noisy from the beginning but not bad at all not not bad at all guys so let's go ahead and try it out on this other steeper hill all right here we go guys i'm going to stay in pas zero so that i can use the throttle i'm currently in gear three so let's see how far we can get with just throttle. Then I'm gonna start putting some pedal effort into it. So I'm gonna start pedaling about now to help it out. And gonna downshift into one, give it a little bit more help. But let's go up into PAS5 now. So up the hill, no problem. Something in the front of the bike is vibrating can't quite figure out exactly what that is whether it's my phone mount or something in the frame maybe maybe it's the battery but it pulled me up there no problem i did have to pedal it's not going to pull you up hills like this with this 350 watt motor but if you put your a little bit of your own effort in you shouldn't have any problems so let's go ahead and take this on a longer ride go for a few miles up a longer hill and we're going to see how it performs overall all right guys, we're testing out the brakes on this bike. 25 miles an hour, 26. And I can lock them up easily if I wanted to. Really, really quiet brakes, really nice. Seem like they have great stopping power. So no problems with the mechanical disc brakes on this one, guys. They work pretty good. So we're gonna take a long ride up this hill here to the left. It's pretty much all uphill for a mile or so. And we're just gonna see how they motor holds up overall i think i'm just going to stay in pedal assist five and just see how how it goes what kind of speed we can maintain what kind of power we have so i'm going to bump it down to gear five there this is all uphill not super steep but just trying to show you guys what you might encounter in your area if you were riding riding this bike so like I said previously, I'm about 160 to 165 pounds, maintaining a good 10 to 12 miles an hour, even on this slight incline. Now it will get steeper up ahead here. Now this display is pretty nice because it shows you a battery level meter and also shows you a percentage. 
and you could cycle through a trip meter which I don't believe is really that accurate I'd have to do further testing but it shows you the voltage of your battery which is really nice current time in your odometer so this is really uh, pretty similar to the electric display it looks a little different but it's pretty similar shows you a lot of the same features so we're gonna stay on current here and see how much current this motor is putting out up this hill it looks like it's staying steady around 14 to 15 amps of current so even though it's a 16 amp controller it looks like 15 amps is going to be about the max output on this bike but it's nice to know that the controller is rated for a little bit more than what the bike's going to be putting out so it's not good like i said it's not going to be super powerful but as long as it stays giving me those 14 to 15 amps and doesn't limit me like the mataku did then I think it's gonna be a great option for a lot of people, especially entry level, wanting to get into an e-bike that doesn't have a lot of money. Front suspension definitely takes out some of the blows. It's not the smoothest, but it's definitely better than not having suspension. Let's go down this dirt road here. It's pretty bumpy. Definitely a suspension seat post would make it a lot better of a rad but front's not too bad with that front suspension like i said even though there's no adjustability it's better than not having anything let's turn around and go back up here and this is where i like throttle to work with the pas level so to use the throttle to get started you have to put it back down into zero if you want that throttle to help you out so let's go back up this road here so far, I don't see it limiting me at all. Now there is a little bit of vibration up in the front somewhere. I think, I don't know if it's the cables in the frame or if it's the controller rattling in the frame and resonating up through the frame. I don't think it's gonna be a big deal. Uh, I probably could pinpoint it and try to cushion it a little bit but just something to keep in mind if you do hear some vibrating or rattling resonating up through the frame i don't think it's going to be that big of an issue just a little bit annoying once you get going on this bike though guys and especially on level ground it is very quiet it's just getting up there a little bit going it's a little bit noisy mostly because of that vibration in the frame so let's do a little bit of throttle All right guys, here we go up this longer hill. I'm in pedal assist zero. And it looks like the max current that it's giving me is 13 to 14 amps. Oh, it's still hitting 15. That's a good sign. Let's downshift. Still holding me at 15 amps. I'm in gear three. Still full throttle, maintaining around 10 miles per hour. Now this hill does get a little steeper up here. So it's not gonna be super powerful up these longer hills, guys. You will have to put some effort in. My legs are starting to burn a little bit, which I don't mind because I love getting some exercise while I'm out on these. Gonna downshift the gear one to help it out a little bit more. Still holding 15 amps. All right, guys, it didn't seem like it cut my power at all, so that's nice to see. Leveling off a little bit now. And my legs are on fire, guys. <laughs> so one very nice feature about this bike is that it only weighs 49 pounds, so it is pretty lightweight over off for the size of the bike now the battery on this bike is integrated into the frame and like i said it's not easily swappable but you can remove it by removing the plate on the bottom of the bike taking out 
the charge port, you got to unscrew that and remove that. The controller sits in the bottom of the half of the frame. You have to pull it out and unplug it from the battery. Then you remove these two screws here, which hold the battery in, and then you could remove the battery out of the frame if you had to replace it. So like I said, not easily swappable, but you can remove it if you had to, if you had to replace the battery. So up here on top of the bike, you can see right in the middle is the pretty nice display. It has some pretty big numbers on the display, which is very nice. Like I said before, it had the charge port for charging a phone. I love to see that on bikes, especially with me doing these videos. My phone's always dying. Not so much with my new one, but my old one was always dying. On the left-hand side here, you have your control buttons up and down and your mode button in the center for controlling your PAS levels. You have a headlight switch here next to that and a pretty loud horn. You have a set of hard rubber ergonomic grips, exactly the same ones that are on the electric bikes. Probably would maybe change those out for a set of silicon foam ones. Over here on the right side, you have a half twist throttle and a thumb shifter here, seven speed Shimano thumb shifter leading down to the free wheel in the back and a Shimano Tourney derailleur. That is an entry level derailleur, but I tend to not have problems with these type of derailleurs on electric bikes because the motor's right in the wheel, so it takes a lot of the tension off of there. So, okay, derailleur there. It does have a derailleur guard, which is always nice to see from uh, preventing that from getting bent if it was laid on its side. Coming up the chain, we have, I believe this is a 42 tooth front sprocket, and it does have a plastic guard on the outer side. There's no guard on the inner side. That would have been nice to see a double uh, ring chain guard, and it does have an exposed pedal assist sensor here. So you might have to clean this off over time. It is not a sealed cadence sensor. For the pedals, they are a fairly large aluminum pedal with reflectors on either side. For the brake levers, they're just a standard non-branded brake lever coming down to a pair of Phileo mechanical disc brakes. And it's using 160 millimeter rotors on both the front and the rear of the bike. For power, this bike's using a 36 volt, 16 amp controller and it's powering the rear hub 350 watt motor. It does come with a set of fenders. However, the front fender is a little bit short, not a super big fan of the fenders on this bike. The rear fender attaches to the seat post and it will help prevent you from getting a little bit muddy, but I'm not quite sure it comes down far enough. If you were in rain, it might still come up over the fender and still stripe your butt or your back. But Cheap fenders, not a big fan of those, but what do you expect for around $600? Now there is a spot on the frame to mount a water bottle holder, and there's also bolts to mount a rear rack. One thing I noticed though, I went to tighten these bolts up and the whole uh, thing where it goes into the frame actually was spinning. It did this on both sides where the rack bolts, these ones tightened up a little bit. I didn't want to tighten them too much and them do the same, but hopefully they fix this in the, in the future, I did mention it to them and they said they would probably start welding these in instead of the way they are now. So that's nice to see that they're willing to, uh, you know, do some upgrades on the bikes for little things that are noticed like that. For tires, this bike's sitting on a pair of 26 by 1.95 Chow Yang MTB 27 TPI wire bead 68A compound tires. Now, I don't know exactly what that means, guys, but that's the specs on the tire. Pretty decent little knobby tire for the bike. There is a front suspension on this bike. However, there is no adjustability on it for preload or lockout. So this is a pretty cheap front suspension, but it does soften the ride quite a bit. One thing I do want to show you guys that I was really excited to see is the adjustable gooseneck on this bike, because this is usually something that you have to add as an option. A lot of bikes don't include this. This is about at least a $30 upgrade if you were to purchase that individually and install it on your bike. But it is 31.8, which is really nice to see. And you can adjust this down if you were a taller rider, or you can adjust it all the way back like I have it if you're a shorter rider and don't want that far of a bent over reach. But that is really nice to see that that adjustable gooseneck is included on this bike. In the front, we have a pretty decent LED headlight, but there is no tail light in the back of the bike. However, there is a reflector to help you out at night. That would have been nice to see some sort of tail light for safety. And the seat on this bike isn't too bad. It's a, it's a little bit stiff, but I don't know, not too bad. You might wanna look at putting a suspension seat post in the bike to soften 
the rear of the bike. I think with a suspension seat post, it would be a lot softer ride. But overall, guys, not too bad for just around $600 to $700 for an entry-level bike. If somebody was looking to get a cheap bike just to cruise around town, I think it would be a pretty good option. All right, guys, so overall, I think this is a pretty good bike for the value for $600 to $700 with shipping. For an entry-level bike, it's not bad. If you guys need a little bit more power, I think if you had another $300 to spend, you could get something a lot better with more power. But for an entry-level bike, for some of you that want to keep costs down, but just something to cruise around town on and don't need a swappable battery, I think this is going to be a great option for you. So overall, let me know what you guys think down below. Like I said, I'll put a link at the bottom of this video. If you guys are interested in checking it out, it will be an affiliate link, but I appreciate all you watching. And uh, if they provide me with a coupon code, I'll leave that down there as well to save you guys a few bucks. But thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified of future videos. And please subscribe to my Instagram so you guys can see previews of future videos and some cool pictures. Thanks for watching everyone. See you around.